Hello fellow YouTubers, Bear Prepper here. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made my top bar beehives. We've got the orchard in now and it's real important that we have bees to pollinate the fruit so that we get some great fruit. I didn't want to afford the cost of a real hive and top bars cost about $70 each to build which is within my budget. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take one by sixes, and at the end of the video I'll include the um, actual list of what we used. One by sixes, and you're going to cut them in half and glue them together. The reason we cut them in half to start is because that's the biggest size we need to work with, and it was just easier to do it that way and have more room and they weren't sticking up everywhere. Use a good quality glue and then clamp them together. Let them glue overnight so that they're really firm when because you're going to be cutting into them and then what we did was we took one by twos and we cut them into 17 inch lengths we made 30 of these these are the actual top bars now i'm giving you the contents for one hive and then we took another one by two and we ripped it in half then we took a saw blade, table saw blade, and we set it to one eighth inch depth and we just used the depth width of the saw blade. And we cut a groove through all the one by twos that we ripped in half. Again, you're going to want 30 of these, but they are 12 inches in length. And the reason you have the groove is so you can put honey in it so that the bees can start their hives from there. So it's really nice. It gives them a, a, a start. And supposedly top bar beehives really help with colony collapse. So we didn't have enough clamps, so we took pieces of wood and we screwed them into the table over our top bars. That way they could glue down overnight and be nice and sturdy. And again, I'm just showing you us gluing them down and the three screws that are holding them in. Then we took another one by four and we cut it into quarter inch strips, 17 inches long. These are going to go in between each of the top bar strips. It makes it much easier when you're trying to get the cone out because you can pry this off first to get in there and also break the cone away from the other board if it happens to be connected without having bees come at you everywhere. All right, these are one by threes and they're for the roof and they are going to be the long ones, 47 and a quarter inches, two of them. And the short ones are 18 and a quarter inches. And that will form your roof cap when you go to put it all together. It kind of sits on everything. Now this is the only pressure treated wood. They're two by fours cut in half. Now I forgot to include the side pieces that will be coming up. They're 17 by 11, so they're 1 by 6 is glued and cut to 17 inches, and you need two of those. Now the woods you want to use are western, red cedar, Douglas fir, pine, or similar, and I'll have it in the description box below. So I wanted a viewing window, so we took a 1 by 3, cut it to the length that we wanted the window to be, and then cut, traced it and cut it out. So we had a perfect fit for the one by three to make our viewing window. Isn't that beautiful? And we glued the plexiglass behind it. Now to cut the plexiglass, we found these little squares and so we're gonna use them. What you have to do is you have to turn your blade backwards. Any blade will do but it must be backwards, otherwise you'll shred your plexiglass. And so we went ahead and cut three of these in half, and then we're going to lay three of these side by side behind that cut window to make a viewing window. So that I don't have to take the top off to see how my bees are doing. I can take the side panel off. Less disturbance, happier bees. Now to, to put your top bar together, this triangle piece here, is 15 inches by 6 inches with one of the top bars glued to the top of it or screwed on. And what you do is you lay your board up against it 
and screw it in on the side and you use that big flat piece that we measured and you're just going to screw it into it. You can screw the top hole pretty easy, but for the bottom one, I recommend that you take a spare scrap piece of wood and you just kind of mark it at the top and the bottom. And then you can draw a line on front to know where to screw those holes to make sure it's in. So that piece just needs to be bigger than the 15 inches when it's on an angle. And whatever angle you make those floaters, which are what the triangles that are inside, is the angle you want. Once that's all together, you want to drill your holes for your bees. You find the middle of your side piece, and your side piece is 48 inches long. I'm sorry, your side piece is 44 inches long. And you want to go 2 inches up and then 3 inches to either side of that hole and three inches from the end piece. You want to create five one inch holes and then you want to take one of your top bar floaters and two inches up from the bottom, center it and drill you a hole so they can go get the sugar water because that's going to be in one of your side cavities. So it really doesn't matter. Just remember two inches from the bottom and centered. Then we took gutter and vent screening and we folded one in down because it's the perfect width and then stapled it on but make sure you fold it with it on the outside so that nobody gets cut up like the bees and then we stapled it going all the way down the sides all the way across nice and evenly so the bees can't get in out or in from that area and then stapled it on the opposite end there was then a quarter inch hangover, so we folded that up to try to help critters from not getting in. You use a screen so that the mites can fall out and they don't stay in the hive. You can also make a winter. So now it's time for our roof gables. We have a 12 inch board, so we want 11 inches for our roof gable because it should be smaller than your roof angle. And so what I did was I drew a line down the center of the board just for the, where the center of the board was. And then I put my board width from the corner out till I found 11 inches where it fell on the measuring tape. And then I marked it. And that is where my peak came in. That way when I lay the board up there, it fits almost perfectly. And I just transferred that same setting to the other side and made two gables out of that. Now, I did plywood here, but as we were screwing it in, it ended up splitting and breaking and was just a mess. So we found a piece of one by seven, I think one by eight, excuse me, piece of one by eight, and we cut it out of that. So that would be added to your list or just use one of your leftover one by six because you will have some extra and just cut them out side by side. So that'll work, no extra supplies. And that board <clears throat> is, of course, like I said, it is 11 inches in length and approximately three and three quarters. It's 19, excuse me, 19 and three quarters inches long by three and three quarters up from the bottom. And I already gave you these measurements. The sides are 18 and a quarter and the long wise is 47 and a quarter. And you want to make sure you go ahead and use one by threes because you want it to sit above your top bars. You don't want it to rest on them. And it needs to be bigger than the whole assembly so that it can just sit over it. It's not sitting on it, it's sitting on the legs. That way it doesn't cause any pressure inside. Then you take some beeswax. This is natural, 100% beeswax. I got a pound of it and I used about two thirds a pound. And I melted it in a pot of water over the stove and then I took a spoon and I just spooned it in that eighth inch groove. This, like I said, is what gives the bees their start. They get lured in because they smell the beeswax. 
and then they can build their hives directly off it. And you don't have to be nifty neat, just get it in the groove. It cooled down quick enough that it didn't really pour over the sides very much. Then I took butcher block and beeswax and I mixed it together with the other third and I spread that on the inside of the top bar beehive, including those side pieces. And that's kind of like a lurent for them. So there we go. I'm showing you the built one. Now the roof pieces, all we did was we took the one by sixes glued together and cut them in half and that was our roof size. We didn't measure, we didn't worry about it. And this is the beautiful viewing window. Those are the floaters you see inside. They should move easily up and down the box. Just turned out beautiful. When you do the screws for the legs, you go in on the bottom towards the hive and out on the top from the hive. Use a washer on the net side. And I'll give you the size of washers and screws for that. Easily lifts off and that's what your top bar looks like. What's really nice, as you see, there's no holes. So when you take this roof off, you're not getting accosted by bees. They can't get up here. So when you take out those quarter inch boards, it breaks the cone free and you can just lift it out. We're going to be making a little um, cone stand. There are two different types and I just haven't decided which type I want to make yet. But then you just pull the cone out and you set it on this cone stand. And you can do all your work from there. When you put the roof on, you're going to set it on the two by fours. And then you can move to the other side and pull it forward. In order for this to be a one person job, female, I'm going to put two handles on the roof so I can lift it off and put two knobs on the viewing window. Now you can separate this hive. You can have your honey in one of the holes that you're going to plug up with a cork. Your honey, excuse me, your sugar water. And then you have your hive. And then you have another floater board that if you get another hive or you can't find another swarm, you can temporarily store it in this hive. So it makes it really nice. You just get one inch, one gallon corks for those one inch holes. On the roof, we're going to do a corrugated board. That's why we left the gap in the center for the heat to rise out because it's so hot here in Texas. And the corrugated board will keep all the water out. And again, I'm just telling you, we changed it from plywood. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you make a top bar beehive and get your own hive going. Blessings.